notebook number one. This is for stage one, which is Calweb detector one. Uh, the inputs to this are, like Alicia mentioned, the uncal.fits files, the raw files. And then the outputs are going to be rate.fits and rate int.fits. And so uh, Alicia pointed out that this one, the rate ints file, contains a separate slope image for every integration within your exposure. And the rate file then averages those into a single rate image uh, across all integrations. There's a short section here with documentation links. These are largely repeats of what Alicia showed before. So there's a link to the JDocs page, which is a high-level description. Uh, there are links to the GitHub, or I should say the Read the Docs page, which is the more software-centric documentation. Uh, a link to the GitHub repository where the pipeline software lives and with instructions on how to install it. And then a link to the help desk if you have any questions down the road. So these, these next two sections here, installation and reference files, uh, these are not actually very important today for the webinar because we're working in this JupyterHub environment where everything has already been set up. But in the future, if you download this notebook and you want to run it on your local machine, these two sections will tell you how to install the pipeline and also how to set up the uh, CRDS to, in order to have the pipeline grab the reference files that it needs. So with that, let's start by importing some packages we need. Uh, remember, shift enter will run the cell. And while it's running, we'll get the, the star. And then when it's finished, the star will change to a number. Sometimes the first cell takes a little bit of, a little bit of time to get them set up, I think. Uh, and run these imports. There we go. Here we are importing the. Uh, the entire pipeline, column detector one, and as well as all of the individual steps that are contained within the pipeline. Uh, and don't worry about this error for the moment because we're not going to use PySync code today. It's always good to check and see what version of pipeline you're using. 1.2.0 is the current uh, latest release. So now we'll define just a couple of things to make the rest of the notebook flow a little better. So we've got an output directory for output files. And then just a, uh, a series of a few kind of convenience functions just to make plots and showing images more, uh, more quick. Those are defined. Then we'll go on here and we'll download some example data to use within the notebook. In this case, we're downloading a single uncal file from NearCam that we'll use to test things out. Cell downloads a uh, persistence file, which we will talk about a little bit uh, later on. And we'll download a parameter reference file, uh, actually a few parameter reference files. And these, these files, we'll talk a little bit more about them in later notebooks, but these contain essentially lists of parameters and values. Um, and it's kind of a uh, convenient way to change parameter values in, a, in an organized way when you're going to call the pipeline. In these last two cells, we'll download an example MIRI uncal file and a parameter reference file. So later on in this notebook, there will be there are a couple of examples uh, that you can go through. We're going to skip them today, but they, they make use of these MIRI files. Like I mentioned, there are three different methods, three different ways you can call the pipeline, two of them from within Python and one from the command line. So within, pipeline, within Python, we have these run and call methods. Uh, and it's the same for every pipeline and every step. They all have run and call methods. And then from the command line, there's the st run command. So just to kind of get our feet wet here a little bit, uh, here is how you would use these three different methods for the case where you don't change any parameter values and you want to keep everything default. So this is just the very basic, simplest case. So here with the run method, we've got Calweb Detector 1, which we imported above, and we create an instance of the Detector 1 pipeline. 
And then all we need to do is call this detector one dot run the run method and give it the uncal file that we downloaded up above. And that's it. Um, and then similarly for the call method, in this case, call is going to, so I should say the run method here, we're creating an instance and then running the pipeline in two steps, two different commands. With the call method, those two are wrapped into one. So here you can see we have detector one pipeline dot call and we provide the uncal file that we downloaded. So it's slightly different, um, and you'll see later on as the calls get more complicated, kind of the advantages and disadvantages of both. And then finally, if you're working from a command line, here's st run. And I apologize, this cell shows up uh, much better when you're viewing the notebook locally. I'm not sure why on, on JupyterHub it looks like this. But so st run, you provided, this is the name of the pipeline class here, detector one pipeline and then the name of the uncalc file that you want to process. So those are the easy, basic, uh, the easiest way to call the pipeline in the simplest case. So that's without changing any parameter values. So down below here, I'm going to start to talk about how you would change parameter values, because presumably that's what you would want to do. Um, section here is going to talk about parameter reference files, like I mentioned above. We're actually going to skip over this, and we'll talk about it more in the uh, next notebook, where we start to actually play with them a little bit more. So let's move on here to the actual Calib Detector 1 pipeline where we're going to call it. Let's define this uh, file base name, and that, that's just to make it a little bit easier to specify output file names. What we're going to do here is a more complex call. We're going to change a few parameter values. Uh, and so I'll show again how to do it with all three methods. <clears throat> as, we move on to the, as we move on to the steps below, uh, for those, they only show the one method just to, to uh, save a little bit of time. So in terms of changing parameter values, how do you know what there is to be changed? Um, all pipelines and all steps share this small list of uh, parameters that can be used. So save results, which is just a true-false, whether the output is going to be saved into a FITS file, um, and then the output directory for that file, and the output file base name for this file. To point out, you have to be a little bit cautious when you specify this, because this is treated as basically a, 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 base, a base name. So depending on what pipeline or step you're running, uh, it will add some sort of suffix onto the end of this name that you're providing. <clears throat> so these are common to all steps and pipelines. And so now let's let's move on. We're talking about Calib Detector One specifically, and within Calib Detector One there are several different steps. So how do you know what step specific parameters there are to be varied? So you have you have this dot spec attribute that applies to all uh, pipeline steps. So here for the reference pixel step, you do dot spec. And if you run that cell, you'll see a list of five different parameters that you can play with, along with their default values. So if you do nothing, these default values are what will be applied. Similarly, for the jump step, which is the cosmic ray flagging step, you can see we've got a few more that we can play with. Let's take a look at how to call detector one and while modifying some parameter values. So we'll start using we'll start by using the run method. So just like before, we'll create an instance of the detector one pipeline. Let's set these pipeline specific parameters. So the output directory we defined up above in the notebook. So we'll, we'll set that. And we'll also say that we want to save the results. So we'll set that equal to true. Now, if you want to set some step-specific parameters, this is how you do that. So you have detector one dot step name, and then dot the name of the parameter. So in this case, you, know, you can see we're setting ref pix use side ref pixels, which is right up here. You can see in this case the default value is true. 
we're actually setting it to true. I'm just doing this as an example of setting a parameter. Um, and then similarly for the linearity step, let's say that we want to save those results to a fits file. And for cosmic ray flagging, which is the jump step, we set the rejection threshold to be six sigma. And then one more kind of special case here to set. This is that persistence file that we downloaded earlier. So basically what this is is a map that shows, it describes the state of the charge traps in the detector at the time of the exposure. Um, <clears throat> so we'll include this here. Usually I think the pipeline will get this from previous exposures. But we'll set it here just to show you how to do it. And finally, after all that, now we can actually call the run method and provide the uncal file that we downloaded. You can see this is now running. It's going to output a, a fairly giant log. Um, so while this is running, let's go over the other two methods, and then we'll kind of come back to this log for a minute. So to do the to make the same pipeline call using the call method. Um, so here's our simple case from before, where we don't, we don't change any parameter values. When you're using the call method and you do want to change parameter values, the easiest thing to do is to use these parameter reference files that we'll talk about in the next notebook. So in this case, you're using .call. You provide the uncal file. You can set the pipeline-specific parameters directly like this. And then for the step-specific, Often it's most it's easiest to use to set config file equal to the name of this parameter reference file. Um, if you don't happen to have a parameter reference file or you don't want to use one, another way to do that would be to set this to create this parameter dictionary. So this is a nested dictionary where the keys are equal to the uh, pipeline step names, and then for each one the value is a separate dictionary of the parameter name and value. So here you can see we're setting the same three parameters that we set up above in the run step. So then in this case, you use the dot call method, provide the uncal file, the parameter specific, part of the pipeline specific parameters you set the same as before, and then you just say steps equals this dictionary. That's another way to do it. And then if you are working from the command line with the strun command, <clears throat> one way to do it would be strun, again, the name of the pipeline class and the name of the uncal file that you're working on. The pipeline specific parameters you can set just with minus minus set those. And then for the step specific, if you want to set them manually one at a time, you do minus minus steps and then the name of the step and then the name of the parameter and the value. So you can see uh, if you're setting more than you know, two or three parameters here, this command starts to get a little bit unwieldy. And so one advantage of these parameter reference files is if you have one of these, all you need to do is strun, the name of the parameter reference file, which we'll see later contains the name of the pipeline. So you don't even need to give strun the name of the pipeline you're using. And then your uncal file. And it should go off and, and do the same thing as the running call commands. Let's head back up here for just a minute. And let's see. Right, so this is done. So the log is really big, and there's a lot of stuff in it. I'm just going to touch on a couple of little details. So you'll see the first thing it does is it creates instances of all the various steps within the pipeline. It'll give you a big long list of all the parameters and values that it's going to use. And then it's going to go to CRDS and it will fetch the reference files that it needs in order to run. Once it's done with that, it will actually start. Here you can see group scale is the first step of the pipeline, which in the case of NearCam is actually skipped. And you can see it tells you that here. And so it moves on to the next step. And so it works its way down through all the steps, giving you some various notes. And then at the very end, you can see it saves the result into the rate ints file. And then it also saved 
the rate five, and it's done. Um, so in terms of is the log file safe, there is a way to do that. Uh, and I remember I put the link somewhere to it, I believe. I think maybe at the bottom of this notebook. It's a little bit complex, uh, <clears throat> but there is a way to do it. So now that we have the pipeline uh, finished, let's just take a quick look at the results at the rate file. Here, usually what you can do is just take the name of the your uncal file and replace uncal with rate. And most of the time that is the name of the rate file. In this case, I'm going to use I'm going to use AstroPy to open the file. Then uh, show image is one of the convenience functions that we can find up above. And so here's our rate image. The units are actually DM per second. Um, and so you can see we've got a little bit of one of breath noise here, which are these horizontal lines. And you've got the full you know, 2K by 2K detector. 